Ricky, hi. Hello. Hello, Ricky. It's uh, I'm How are you smelling today? <laughs> are you smelling? You smell, How are you smelling? How's the Berliner Luft, uh, the Berlin air? Nice, fresh, yeah. crystal clear. I really would like to know um, why you're here in the city. What's going on? Nothing. I was in the neighborhood. Okay. I came to get a bologna sandwich. <laughs> and uh, Greenwich Village is actually quite uh, similar, like, like yeah. this area, I ask you? Uh, hmm. uh, some parts. There's some similarities. Okay. Which one? Uh, freaky people. Okay. I've been meeting some freaky people. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's like the village, you could say that, a little different, it's just European-ish. Okay. Uh, but there's good life here. I found a good haagen shop across the street from my hotel. That was, that was great. I got okay. myself a blueberry yogurt <laughs> sundae. All yeah. right. That made my night. Okay. You know, I could have got drugs and everything, but I was like, eh, let me just get a ice, a frozen yogurt. Okay. I mean, anything's available here, which is one thing as in New York. Okay. Anything's a phone call away. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you since two decades, uh, you're a street photographer, let's say. Well, correct me if it's not. No, 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 you're on the right path. I just want to exemplify that I came up, you know, 85, I just started doing it kind of like by accident. You know, I was going to college to be a gym teacher, phys, phys ed. Yeah. And I had a girlfriend at the time, kind of artsy girl, and you know, it was a tumultuous relationship. And uh, you know, at the end it wasn't good on my half. She, okay. did, she dissed me for a dude with tie-dye yoga pants. Okay. So I was mad and uh, then about a month or two later, I found a bag that she left at my house, a bunch yeah. of stuff, clothes, da da da, little camera. And I said, you know, I get maybe because I'm Scorpio. Okay. I said, I'm going to take this camera, I'm going to make this, this chick sorry she did me like a okay. wet tuna sandwich. Okay. So I started, I said, I'm going to become a, I'm going to make myself a photographer. I never took a class, but it was an auto. Autofocus, so I just put it on. I just started going around and taking pictures at the nightclubs, and like overnight, I went from Joe Schmuck, Joe Schnook, to like the Rickster downtown photographer. Okay. So photography can open many doors, and it did for me. So I decided to go through that, and you know, I noticed that when I used that instrument with the camera, that people were receptive to me. So um, I just went with the flow and okay. uh, I just shot what I liked. I went to art openings like Keith Haring, Basquiat, I go to you know hip hop shows at yeah. the Apollo. Okay. And just, you know, pictures I took. You know, so my pictures and my uh, my body of work, it's just things that I like. So it's like, you know, my time capsule. It's just, you know, life, my life according to me. Whoever is interested in it, you know, Great. Whoever's not, that's fine too. It's just it's, it is what it is. Okay. So the photography, I uh, in 1999, I did a collaboration with a guy in San Francisco called uh, Upper Playground. So he kind of designed a logo for me that said Ricky Powell Street Photography, which I liked because you know photography is very broad, broad range of photographers and work. So I figured, ah, oh, street photography is a good, you know, sub genre of photography. And I, I like it. I like street photography because, you know, the setups, yeah. uh, they're infinite. Okay. They're easy, they're free, they're fun. Yeah. So I like that uh, I became known as a street photographer and then, I don't know, through Articles, people started calling me, you know, the L word, street photography. I don't like to say that about myself. You will not, because there's uh, one uh, really uh, important institution in your neighborhood. It's uh, the Village Mangler, I say. Oh, shit. Do you like it or it has changed? What are you, 
Don't you know that's my... I think it's your... That's my... favorite one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's change this way something? No. No, they're dead. Good point. Yeah. That has stayed the same. Okay. Hasn't changed in 80 years. Okay. I love it. It's around the corner from my house. Okay. Sometimes I go at 3, 4 in the morning and yeah. everything's closed and I just kind of stand... I stand in front of it and just kind of feel the, the vibes, yeah. the history. Because, okay. you know, I love... I love jazz, especially yeah. jazz from the 60s, with yeah. like Lou Donaldson and okay. you know, all the Blue Note. I okay. love that, you know? So to stand there and be like, oh my God, this is where, you know, all the real, the real, yeah. the real mofos came, you know, innovated, intelligence, yeah. everything. It means a lot to me. The innovators of intelligent music, you know, you can't top that. Okay. When you have, when you raised up in that period, uh, when you had your first photographies with Easy E, NWA. Well, that wasn't my first. No, I never photographed NWA. I got to do an interview because <clears throat> besides, you know, I have different, you know, skills, I guess. One of them is writing. I used to do a lot of interviews and a lot of writing. So I got an interview with him in 93. Okay. He was very cool. We had yeah. fun. We okay. had fun. We had a mutual respect. Okay. It was fun. Okay, important. Yeah, he came to the door at the hotel with a big blunt. Okay. He I, said... I, I think it was really natural, actually, no, I guess. Yeah, me and him, it was just, yeah, it was match made in paradise. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I had my public access TV show at the time, too, so... I didn't just bring a tape recorder and a, and a photo camera. I also brought my video camera. So we started fucking around. And I, he took the video camera and started like, you know, doing crazy things with it. So I dubbed him the John Cass, no, the black John Cassavetes. Okay. You know who John Cassavetes is, yeah. right? Yeah. So, so, so some, did you see in these three days something that inspired you? That you inspired me. Rocks, that wow. rocks, that is unique. Would you let me speak? I will. This guy. <laughs> uh, let me squeeze something out. Well, as I've been taking this guy, this this guy Johan from Dedicated put me in a hotel on the other side of town. So one good thing about it is I get to look at the city streets in the half-hour cab ride. And uh, actually the thing that really catches my eye is the architecture of the, the classic old buildings. Okay. I get a kick out of looking at those, the big ones. Okay. They're like medieval looking. You mean the, from the socialism part? You mean Maybe, they look like some like dark, Russian, you know? dark religious buildings. Okay, yeah. Okay. Some shit. Okay. Those I find eye-catching. Okay. And like, oh my God. Depressive in a way? Yeah, depressive. Yeah, I'm just like, yeesh. But, I mean, I appreciate it. Just the architecture and just how it looks. It looks like a big sculpture. But, uh, inspiring. I see the graffiti. The graffiti really doesn't do much for me. Again, because, you know, I don't want to get into it too much, but, like, these days, kind of like part to answer the question before is, like, Culturally, like music, especially hip hop, and art, especially graffiti, it's not the same as like, you know, 20, 30 years ago. I used to go to all the art op graffiti art openings and hip hop shows because it was, it was raw, it was real, yeah. it was innovative. Yeah. Today, it's just regurgitated. It's just like formulas of, oh, we're gonna take a little of this, take yeah. a little of that. Yeah. And we make a new song. Yeah. And it's like week. Okay. Currently, I am now fifty-five years old. Uh, I still feel youthful. Um, I've gone through a lot of ups and downs. Okay. Like a roller coaster. That's life. Yeah. You gotta just hang on for dear life in the ups and downs. And um. You know, that was partly due to me, but I think I was a victim of how uh, the world was, and I was affected, so I kind of like withdrew. 
it went into a dark, you know, dark place. Um, but I'm coming out now. I'm having a uh, a renaissance actually right now. It feels good, and um, I feel good. Like I use Instagram and uh, Face Facebook as a barometer or a gauge to see how people, you know, respond to me or okay. view me. Okay. And I like it. They like they like how I do. Okay. Because I like to produce dope visuals, but I like to incorporate my my brain with my writing. So I put the visual and my writing together as a package. And um, I like to see people. They like what I like what I put, but they also have a nice laugh. There's some humor to it. Yeah. So that makes me feel good. That is like um, another one of my hashtags. That's nourishment for my blood. To see what I'm producing has a positive effect. So, you know, that's important to me. I want to be a positive, you know, whatever. And that's that's uh, that's priority. Okay. At this point, for my soul. Okay. And that's it. I want to just keep it going. And then, you know, as far as like financial, I don't need to be rich. Okay. You know, with the rewards or whatever of being this and that, it's secondary. uh, Because I find it a privilege that I can uh, go, you know, I don't have to go somewhere every day. Strict schedule, because that would kill me. So I realize I'm. I have a privilege to do, be doing what I what I am doing, so I want to use my powers constructively and be a positive force and uh, go against the grain with people who thrive from trying to look fierce. I don't want to be. I don't. Want, I'm not interested in that. Okay. And that's that. Do you wearing some or something sustainable today? That is one reason I am down with dedicated brand. Okay. Because it's uh, it's uh, conscious, environmental. It's intelligent. It's uh, important. You know, it's not about just looking fierce like yeah. most brands. Yeah. So it's a good positive thing. Uh, this brand is all about positive. Positivity, I like it very much. I'm proud to be associated with it. Okay. Do you see um, some sustainable movements as well there in Well, the if uh, if uh, this brand really jumps up to the next level, um, I'll just be glad to be part of it and you know help promote their message. Okay. Because we need it right now. The way things are, we need every little, you know, stimulus that, you know, says, hey, the environment Think is, about is hurting. Yeah. We okay. need to, like, um, not passively uh, participate, but actively participate in, uh, you know, just how we do. It's, Okay. You know what I'm saying, right? I know what I'm saying. Right. Um, and you now you have a co- collaboration uh, with, with a brand. And, yes, uh, dedicated. dedicated. I hope it's going to be a long, a long uh, partnership. I like it. I like the message. I like it. Because I'm, I'm vegetarian myself. Okay. So. What, what's, what's, what's the collab- collaboration about? Well, at this point, you know, they just, you know, they put my, my images on t-shirts. Okay. So the clothing, it's comfortable because it's cotton and, uh, you know, just right now, that's it. You know, and it's just t-shirts, but, uh, you know, they also, you know, they brought, you know, Johan brought me out to uh, Seek. Yeah. And did a beautiful presentation of my work, which yeah. always makes me like, oh, you know, whenever my work is presented dope, It makes me like, oh, wow. So I'm very lucky. It's a beautiful, beautiful presentation. Thank you, Johan. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, 
I don't have a telephone here. Thanks so much um, uh, for your works. Okay. We appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Thank you for having me.